All righty, traders, happy slow Thursday. You thought um, maybe there was like a hiccup in the internet or something like that, but no, it was just, uh, it was just me. Anyway, hope you guys are having a great day. Um, it is, uh, it's, it's kind of slow. Um, you know, the euro the, is finding a little bit of support. The dollar is finding a little support here and, um, uh, or the dollar is finding a little bit of resistance. You know, I, I, I don't, um, I don't think the euro the, or the dollar is going to be breaking out as of right now because of why? Well, stocks continue to blaze higher. I mean, we're at all time highs in the equity market. So as long as the equity markets continue to push higher in this fashion, I can't expect that the dollar is going to rally much. Yeah, uh, the 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 um, the you know the um, the difference might be here is if we actually see stocks reverse, but I just think it'll be the case. Sorry, I was just thinking about something for a second. Um, hold on one second. Okay. So let's talk about where we're at. So the euro dollar holding um, it, inside this range, 117.50, uh, 117, you know, we got about mid range, pop back up again into the 40s, probably isn't a bad place to be on the short side of the euro, to, to be perfectly frank. And, I, and the reason why I say that is because, and I don't know if I'm going to short the euro, um, but you notice I put a euro, a euro yen pattern in play in, uh, I'm probably going to be shorting the euro yen here. I, I didn't I put it out, um, but I didn't short it. Well, hell, I'll do it right now. I've been meaning to do it anyway. I just <laughs> been running around. Boom, there I am. And uh, the way I'm playing this is putting my stop loss above 130. And then I'm looking for a move down towards the 50% retracement right here at 128, basically. So if you guys wanna know what I've been up to, what I've been thinking, that's what I've been thinking. I didn't actually think it was gonna be all the way back up here, um, which is fine. Uh, I was meaning to put an order in later today and now seems as good of time as any. So, uh, because I'm taking a swing type of stab at it anyway. Uh, Sterling, you know, continues to trade really heavy here. And, uh, as I mentioned on, you know, earlier, and we have to get above 139 for us to turn bullish here. Uh, the Aussie, Aussie's trading really heavy and, uh, obviously we're coming towards flag support. So do I think the Aussie's going to break down right now? No, not with stocks going higher. Um, but I'm glad I'm, you know, short some Aussie dollar you know, at higher prices, because as long as we continue to hover around these levels with stocks up here, it's just a matter of time before it breaks. Um, Kiwi, triangle support coming in play, dollar Canadian in the middle of a range. Swissy didn't dip as much as I wanted uh, to. I wanted to buy it down here at uh, 9180, as I told you guys earlier. Uh, the US dollar Norwegian Krona, I own some like right around here. I will buy more if I see lower levels. So if we get this, I want to be buying more. Based on what stocks are doing, there's a good chance that's happening. Uh, dollar Mexican peso might trade back down towards this, uh, towards this range bottom. Seems like to me. You know, we're at the 78% retracing, but I wouldn't be surprised if we trade back down to 1980. Uh, dollar yen, just kind of sitting here, but you can see if the dollar yen breaks below this support, I'm gonna delete this as soon as I'm done. Um, like the 110.30 level, that would open up for further downside, okay? Uh, S&Ps are stronger, NASDAQ stronger, uh, Dow is, holding up and its gains at the 127% extension very well. Uh, gold's hovering around the 1750 level. 
Okay. Um, silver looks weak, but divergent relative strength right now. So, well, maybe it's not. It is. Okay. It's divergent right now. Um, let's see if you guys have any questions. Any, anything that you guys want to see? Really quick. Alan S for the pound yen, sure thing. Here's the pound yen. Uh, looks double toppy. Uh, so obviously this is re resistance. You know what, Alan? Here's the thing. I I looking at it. I think now the risk is that we test the support here. This is when the double bottom goes in play, though. You know, if, if you break below here. So I'd even go as far as saying if we pull back to that 38% retracement at 151.50, if that breaks, that would be bearish. That That's what I would think. You're welcome, Alan. Alex says, when do you go on again on vacation? <laughs> Uh, I wish it was soon. Um, trying to think of stuff that I've got going on. Uh, one, one of the things that's kind of disrupting my fall, fall being, you know, the next couple months, I actually have to fly out of here for a few days to go um, help my mother move back into, uh, back into town, which is nice because I haven't lived in the same city as her. And uh, since for 20, 20 years, about 20 years. So I've got a lot of catching up to do. It's hard when you see your mom only a couple of times a year, you know? So I'm, I'm uh, going to fly out there, drive one of their vehicles back or the U-Haul or the, um, she's, she's having her big stuff moved, but she's got a truck that she's you know, moving some stuff. And then, her, you know, my, 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 my stepdad, if you will, he is, uh, he's driving a vehicle. I'm driving, she's driving. So I'm lifting weights right now to, uh, to prepare. <laughs> Lorraine says, is the house you are in now the one with spiders? Uh, no. You mean scorpions? No. Yeah, no scorpions here. Fortunately, I'm gonna knock on wood about that one. <laughs> Everybody's got spiders in uh, in in um, in Arizona, though. I don't think you can get away from spiders, really. You know, the Euro Aussie had a nice bounce off the fifty percent retracement. <clears throat> uh, Girth, who's in Norway, he's he's he is on holiday. He steps in last night. He's like, I'm buying the the Euro Aussie. He bought it like literally at the lows. Good man. Um, Euro New Zealand. Uh, oh, I was going to. I have bids in the pound New Zealand down here that never got filled. Um, I was hoping that we get down towards this channel support. Uh, it, the, that that can that order is going to cancel anyway. Some orders I only leave up for like 12 hours or so, but yeah. Other than that, guys, it is, it's slow. It's a weekend or a weekend. Uh, it's, it's summer. I mean, it's summer doldrums. So just be careful uh, trading too much. Uh, Catherine just jumped in. She goes, Blake, do you like the Euro yen or, or isn't, is it, isn't it behaving? I saw the pip. Yeah, actually I just entered short. Um, you must have came in a little bit late. I was like, I was like, yeah, you guys might have seen the euro yen. I'm like, ooh, shoot, we're at 129.60. I, I meant on actually shorting it earlier, um, but I was running around doing things, and um, so I just shorted it. So I think it's a great risk reward. Look, here's here's the way here's the way it looks. Right, first of all, euro's trading like crap. 
The only reason why it's bounced is because stocks, uh, S&P is at all time highs, but your risk is really right here. Uh, let me flip that. Your risk is really right here. And the reward is right here. And we're currently right here. So if you think about that from a percentage standpoint, let's say it's 129.60. That's why I'm short. 130.11. Target 128. Let's say you got a hundred thousand in currency. So I mean, you're 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 risking. Well, it's a three to one risk reward, one to three risk reward ratio, right? So for me, it's well, it's well worth taking the risk. Uh, even even if it was right here, even if it's at one twenty nine forty five, it's still two to two oh, over two to one risk reward ratio. So uh, Andrea asked, what do I think about Ethereum? You know, first, first, let me, let me just tell you the difference between Ethereum and Bitcoin. My thoughts here. First of all, Ethereum came into pretty, pretty big resistance. So let's, I can start off by saying that big confluence of resistance right here. 127% extension of this move, 618 of this move. I thought we'd reach for 3350, we didn't, and now we're reversing. I have been in the camp that if if I feel that Bitcoin is bottomed, I want I will buy Ethereum. I, Ethereum is the actually the 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 crypto I want to own personally. Um, now I didn't think Bitcoin was going to break out the way that it did, so I've I've missed the Ethereum boat. Um, if if I was to choose to short Ethereum or Bitcoin, I would actually be short Bitcoin over Ethereum. All right, that's my own personal opinion. What I would be if I was trading Ethereum, which I'm not right now. If I was, see the support. The support was a forty two thousand five hundred level. It's huge resistance for. For, uh, for Bitcoin on the way up, it's gonna be a big support on the way down. If that level breaks in Bitcoin, I wouldn't wanna be long Ethereum. That'd be my two cents, okay? Hope that helps. Anyway, hey, um, I, I, just to give you guys a heads up, I'm gonna go do an interview with uh, Bill Baruch from uh, Blue Line Futures. Uh, he, we're gonna talk, I'll tell you exactly what we're gonna talk about. We're gonna talk about crude oil. And his thoughts on crude. <laughs> he's a he's a buyer of crude. He he loves crude oil, but uh, we want to we're, we're going to go in a little bit depth about crude and anything else he wants to talk about. So for those of you guys that are interested in crude, um, you know that might be something for you to listen to. Okay, and uh, have a great day. Just try to stay out of too much trouble. You know, I, this is the one. This is the suggestion I always give. When you're trading in a in a in a summer doldrums, trade smaller than you normally would. Don't let yourself get in a lot of trouble because it's hard to get yourself out of trouble when there's very low volatility. Okay, so um, that's you know that I always like to tell you guys that so you just don't get in any, you know, I whenever I'm trading in low volatility environments, I just don't let. Don't what, put in a stop, and wherever your stop is, let yourself get stopped out. If you're going to get stopped out, don't try to, you know, outsmart the market because when the market's drifting, it just drifts, right? And th then there's no volatility. It's hard to make your money back if you lose too much. So that's why whenever you go in, go in with, I am risking X. That's it. That's all I'm willing to risk. Okay, that that's just the way you should always approach. Low volatility environments, especially like summer doldrums. Between the Thanksgiving and Christmas holiday, late November, early December, we get in the same type of tricky, you know, low and vol low volatility environment. So Tom asked, where's the interview? It's going to be on my computer. <laughs> so we're gonna we'll we'll publish it. It'll be on Trader Summit. That's where it will end up being. Probably later today. So just look for it there. All right, guys, have a great one.
and I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.